This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight, the health minister addresses the shortage of ambulances. Plus, the country records another traffic fatality, and the deputy prime minister expresses optimism about a better fiscal position by the end of the year. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles. Happy Easter, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. Topping news, nearly 16% of emergency calls requesting ambulances are non-emergencies. That's according to Health Minister Dr. Duane Sands, who recently admitted that not only is there a shortage of ambulances, but there is also a shortage of emergency response technicians. The health minister says those two facts are just a part of a much bigger issue. Our Jasmine Brown leads us off tonight with that story. The public ambulance system in Providence does 18,000 runs a year. As many as 3,000 or 3,500 of the runs turn out not to be urgent or emergency runs and could be managed by uh, personal vehicle, taxi cab or what have you. His comments come in the wake of heavy criticism of EMS response times. That criticism came after SC McPherson Junior High School student Robert Sean Valcom Jr. collapsed and died in Dairy Queen at the Southwest Plaza earlier this month. The BHA has since confirmed that an ambulance was dispatched 13 minutes after the call for help came in. San says a major part of the problem is a lack of ambulances. According to the health minister, the public sector only has five ambulances on call during the day and four on call at night. On the road at any given time, we have either five or six ambulances. Right now we're down to five because we have a number of persons out with industrial injuries. And so for every shift, it's five vehicles on the road. And when a call comes in, um, we try to get that vehicle on the road as quickly as possible. He said international standards mandate that there is one ambulance per 20,000 people. What we'd like to be able to do is to increase resources to get to uh, a level where we have as many as one ambulance for 20,000 people. Now, if you look at uh, most urban planning, uh, they will say that one ambulance for 50,000 is adequate. But we've set a goal of one ambulance on the road at any given time for 20,000 persons. However, Sands suggested that it is unlikely there will be any increase in the number of ambulances in New Providence anytime soon. We have to keep this in context because Bahamians don't only live in New Providence. What about people in Grand Bahama? What about people in Abaco? What about people in Uthra, Andrus, uh, Exuma? Are they not also entitled to pre-hospital care? And so as we improve, as we evolve, we have to look at this thing holistically. You also have uh, to look at the other challenges in the healthcare system to determine where you're going to place precious resources and you try as best as possible to keep this thing balanced. As for the current EMS staff, the health minister says they are doing the best they can with what they have. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks a lot, Jasmine. Well, meantime, the health minister is remaining tight-lipped on when the National Health Insurance Authority will give Cabinet a presentation on its revamped National Health Insurance Plan. The Cabinet agenda is not something that we telegraph or make public. In the near future, I believe uh, the NHI Authority will have an opportunity to discuss their adjustments to the plan, and we will consider it. The NHIA forwarded its original NHI plan to Cabinet in February. In March, Dr. Sands revealed that the NHI authority had to give it another go after failing to win Cabinet approval for the scheme at the first try. He said government wanted answers to multiple questions raised during its first presentation to Cabinet on the reformed health care financing plan. Since then, National Health Insurance Authority Chairman Dr. Robin Roberts has insisted the authority intends to address all of Cabinet's concerns about the funding of national health insurance before the end of the month. Dr. Roberts also disclosed that Cabinet wants to be assured that there will be no shortfalls in the funding of NHI. If you remember, the original demand was for no more cookouts. 
dealing with those catastrophic problems. We have spoken about the $25 million or so that Bahamians spend on dialysis services. We have spoken about the challenge that people have that require them to make these obscene choices. Uh, do I pay my mortgage or do I uh, invest in a loved one? Bahamians have been demanding assistance for these serious health care challenges and as a government we are attempting to find a solution to this problem in a way that is fiscally responsible but which uh, is not a burden to the Bahamian public. And we believe that the NHI authority have come up with a reasonable suggestion or solution that will be considered at some point by the Cabinet of the Bahamas. The NHIA has pegged the cost of NHI at $130 million per year. It will be funded by contributions from businesses as officials work out the details. Enrollment for NHI is continuing to climb and is now pegged at around 50,000 people, according to the health minister. Our polling data of patients who actually participate in NHI is that it has been overwhelmingly positive. They enjoy the fact that they don't have to wait on lines. They enjoy the fact that they can have an appointment with a private physician, that they can get their uh, primary health care services. In other news this evening, traffic police are continuing their investigations into a fatality after a female pedestrian was struck and killed last night. According to police, a male was driving a Toyota coaster boat bus rather, traveling north on Blue Hill Road in the area of Wellington Street around 11 p.m. Saturday when he reportedly struck a woman pedestrian. She was transported to hospital, however, she would later succumb to her injuries. So far for the year, more than 20 people have been killed in traffic accidents in the Bahamas. This latest fatality comes on the heels of a recent U.S. report which listed traffic fatalities in the Bahamas as a major concern. Meantime, officers from the Central Detective Unit are on the island of Eleuthera tonight after an armed suspect was shot by police. The incident unfolding in the wee hours of the morning in the area of a local nightclub in Lower Bogue. Officers responded to the scene after receiving reports of gunshots being fired. When they arrived, they discovered a male armed with a machine gun, discharging it. Now, it is reported that the man pointed the gun in the direction of officers who engaged him and shot him to the lower body and recovered the firearm. The suspect was subsequently taken to the local clinic where he was treated and then transported here to Nassau to seek further medical attention. We're told a female patron of the club was also shot during the incident and is listed in stable condition. Investigations into this matter continue. Well, Finance Minister Peter Turnquist says he anticipates the country to be in a better fiscal position by the end of the year. Turnquest told our news that looking at the tough measures government put in place, some not so widely accepted by the public, things appear to be on the right track. We continue to be watchful of our revenue uh, as well as our expenditures. Um, and uh, as long as we stay faithful and disciplined to that, uh, we expect that uh, we're going to be in a better position come the end of the year and moving into the second year of the fiscal plan. The government made quite a few budget cuts throughout various ministries, a move heavily criticized by the opposition. Not to mention there was the increase in value-added tax that took effect last July. However, Turnquest insists sometimes tough decisions have to be made. He added that those hard calls are being are beginning to be. Well, I think uh, we are making tremendous progress. Uh, I think we've got some some relatively good news um, to report soon, and uh, we are. Um, uh, very optimistic that we're going to meet our fiscal targets for this year uh, that we had set for ourselves. Um, as you know, we've done tremendous uh, restructuring and reform uh, over the last year uh, in particular, um, and those things are beginning to bear fruit. We'll still ahead tonight. Hear the views of several pastors about the Easter celebration. That story and more when our news, the weekend edition, returns.